Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 with Lawrence, a long-time fan of space exploration as your host, Mark as the pinnacle of German efficiency and industrial prowess, Tristan as a man who thinks anyone with less than 14,000 hours in game is a noob, and Mike as someone who turned up and won't go away. Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays where it's time for the brand new series that you've all been waiting for. Yes, this is Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration plus Crastorio 2 or Crastorio Squared depending on how careful, how um, uh, pedantically you're reading it. So this is a um, Space Exploration is the big overhaul mod that I've been playing for the last almost two years and recently finished well I, f I finished with it with a spaceship victory and didn't go on to do the archae archaeological victory because a new version of it had just been released um, and uh, so I was excited to go off and play version 0.6 of uh, space exploration which changes a lot of things makes things apparently it makes the difficulty a bit smoother um, difficulty curve a bit smoother it adds a load more things in it makes things a bit more sensible a bit more thought through He's, the, the guys put a bit more um a bit more thought into into, into in, and work into the into the mod pack so it's definitely going to be very worth having a look at crastorio 2 is a sort of an, a, a major overhaul mod as well but that changes a lot of the early game stuff so you've got things like the and i'm not solid fuel you've got things like these these massive crushers for turning stone into uh, sand you've got the automation cores that are required you've got different types of te uh, science packs so instead of making science packs we now we now make um tech cards which are Ooh, a long way over here. Like these, or here we go. In this lab down here, we've got the three different types of tech cards going in. We've got these brown basic ones, we've got the red ones, and we've got the green ones. So there's, there's some major changes there. And as I just ran past over here, there are also major changes made to how you make inserters. So we've got, firstly, you have to make these um, colourful inserter components, um, and then those can be turned into the various different types of inserters through, through down the chain here. So there's quite a lot of major changes to the to the recipes in there, and, and I think things are going to get more complicated as we get deeper into the pack. A bit like a bit like playing Angel Bobs. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself because we're um, we're also play we're, I'm playing this as a multiplayer run this time, so I've got some help with dealing with all of the um, all of the problems that are going to show up during the run, and that's going to be very useful. So I've got um, Mike, Tristan, and Mark all helping me here in, in various different ways. So um, from previous experience, Mike has done Mike tends to do a lot of combat and setting up mines and things like that. Um, I think Mark was also doing mining and smelting in the last stream. I'll, I'll talk a bit more, but I'll talk a bit more about that in, if coming in, in, in the future. Tristan did some exploration and various star. He's described it as lots and lots of all kinds of starter stuff, and it's getting dark. Let's stop. Let's stop that happening. I know that's cheating, but I'm not going to save this game, so it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just, I'm just doing this for your benefit. So I hope, I, 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 I hope you, you find it useful and it helps. So yes, there's um, there's the group of us playing. We've got quite a big mod, a uh, list of mods we've got uh, we've got installed. So I'm going to run through these reasonably quickly to sort of tell you about them. The first one is the AAI containers. So if we look in here, we get, that gives us things like where, these warehouses, which have a massive storage size of 512. They're very, very useful for putting on spaceships and things like that, so you, or for uh, in stations. So you get massive, massive storage without having to put in huge numbers of inserters for passing stuff around. It also makes balancing a little bit easier because you just shove stuff into one and then you can shove it straight back out again, and that's, that's relatively easy. Uh, we've got signal transmission as well, which is the... Uh, okay, we've got these things. Signal receiver and signal... Presumably signal transmitter. Yeah, signal transmitter and signal receiver. I don't know why it didn't pick that one up before. FNEI search has always been a bit glitchy. Um, the signal transmitter and receiver. And this allows you to send signals from one place in your factory to another. And those places could be on the same planet. You might use it to send information from a mine over to your central train handling area. Or you might use it between different planets. So you want to send a signal from... Um, from one, one, one planet to another one to tell it you're running out of rocket parts or vitam vitamalange or vulcanite or something like that so you can t then call in another rocket or a spaceship to bring over the, the um, resources you're waiting for. So that's very, very important for space exploration because it allows you to basically bring your, uh, your circuit network from one planet to another one relatively easily. We've got the Alien Biomes mod as well. That gives us lots of interesting terrain to play with. Um, we haven't really found any yet because we're still on Norvis, so it is fairly, it looks, everything looks reasonably normal at the moment. But this allows us to have make make when we go off to other planets, they all feel exotic. So if you go off to a Vulcanite planet, it'll be all it'll be volcanic and 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 and, and sort of lavery and rocky and so on. If you go off to a Cryonite planet, then maybe it'll be a snowy snowy globe somewhere, and you'll have a lot of snow to think about, all that sort of stuff. We've got bullet trails, so if, uh, that it just makes weapons look a bit prettier, basically. So if I come over here and if I shoot this tree, you see a light. You, you see the bullet fly across, and it turns all the bullets into actual physical objects. And it also means that with the um, what's it called combat mechanics overhaul, you can now have things like 
uh, trees and rocks and things can block can block shooting. So if I try to shoot, if I try to shoot through this, the, all these mine, if I try to shoot this mining drill over here, um, okay, that still worked. It didn't damage it because they're friendly things. Maybe if I try and shoot through these trees, yeah, you see, it, so it hits the first tree rather than the one I'm actually aiming for. And I think that might be different to vanilla, although I have to admit I'm not 100% sure. We've got even distribution installed, and this is, is the mod that have I got anything in my inventory suitable? Not really. Uh, the wood will do. So you can you can come along and you can put you can put things evenly split between lots and lots of different buildings by dragging across them like that. And as you can see, it's going to put two or one or two into each of those rather than just dumping all of them into the first one. So it allows you to split your inventory very very evenly, very very quickly and easily between a lot of different um, buildings that a lot of different machines that are going to need that. You can also press Shift C and it will dump anything in your inventory. It's getting dark again. Uh, days are so short on Norvis. Uh, press Shift C and it'll dump anything out of your inventory into machines you can reach that that, that want that particular thing, which is fantastic for getting for sort of un just quickly unloading all the n random nonsense you tend to pick up in your inventory as you're running around. So, which is why my inventory is a bit cleaner than it normally would be. We've got Far Reach installed, of course. That allows you to basically, if you can see something you can interact with it. So I can chop down trees all the way up here, even though I'm not standing near them and I can't reach them. Um, it's a little bit cheaty, I will admit, but it's not completely game altering because normally I'd just have to, I'd have to run over here. All I'd have to do is run over here and I'd be able to do that anyway. So it just saves you a bit of walking. And I'm quite lazy, so it's nice to have that installed. The one place where it is a little bit cheaty, I have to admit, is if you start using it with uh, when, you, when you're attacking uh, biter nests, but in order to drop turrets down much, much closer than you, you can run yourself, and to reload turrets that are way out of your reach. So we, we hopefully won't use it like that. And I have got... Uh, one of the other things I've got from... Um, I think oh, it's Crestorio 2, is this anti-materiel rifle, which is fantastic because it has a really long range. Um, and it's basically, it's basically it's, it is a sniper rifle, It'll, and I've now run out of ammunition for it because the ammunition is quite expensive. <laughs> oh well. But it's got a really long range, so it's absolutely great at taking out the worms and the biter nests from outside the, the attack range of those. However, of course, as soon as you start attacking, the uh, all the biters will then come rushing towards you. So you need to have your submachine gun as well, which has also run out of ammunition, um, in order to scare them off a little bit. So yeah, it, 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 it's useful. It's like it's like a sort of a very very early game artillery, I guess. We've also installed fluids must flow, which gives us mass. This is one of the recommended mods for Crastorio. It's not vital, but it is it is recommended, and that gives you much much larger pipes. So instead of having these normal puny pipes, which just look like well they look like your normal vanilla pipes because they are, you get much much bigger ones. I think that I think they're twice as wide. They actually take up two squares, but they transport transport enormous amounts of more fluid. So this allows you to if you when, for all those things where you need to transport a huge amount of fluid. Rather than trying to cram it all down through the through the tiny pipes and the normal difficult fluid handling system, with the much much bigger pipes, it goes through much more easily, and you don't have to worry quite so much about the um, about the way the the game handles fluids. We've got FNEI installed, of course, because this is a really useful way of seeing how to make things. So if I look at those logistics um, data cards, I was, I was, tech cards I was talking about earlier, I can see that they're made out of iron gear wheels, electronic circuits and blank tech cards, and how long they'll take to make in each of the different types of machines that can make them. And if I want to know what goes into an electronic tech card, I can do that. And then I can flick through the recipes here to decide which one I want to use. And it gives me a, a, an idea of what, what it, ha, how to do everything with those. Also, not notably with Crestorio 2, you get the, uh, you've got the recycling facilities where you can destroy things like radars and get back some of the bits and pieces you put into them. I'm going to assume that's not all of the bits and pieces you put into them because that'd be far too nice. Um, but yeah, it, it, it allows you to sort of to, 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 to destroy some things if you don't actually need them anymore. We've got Ghost Scanner installed. This isn't something we can use yet, but it will. But when when you have Ghost Scanner installed, a Roboport will output any blueprints that are in its build construction area as signals onto the onto the um, logistics network. So you can use that to then request the parts that that Roboport will need in order to build whatever it's got in its area. And so that's fantastic, especially with the uh, tra signal transmission mod, because you can then use that to send to your construction train to send the signals back to your loading area to load the parts into the construction train it needs that it can then take off to, to your outpost and the outpost can then be built by the bots without needing to faff around anything like as much as you normally would. We've got the grappling gun which is a space exploration recommended mod and that allows, that gives you a harpoon gun basically you can use to uh, grapple anything you want and pull yourself in towards it. Now I didn't actually use it at all in my space exploration run through because I mean, the idea is that you use it when you're in space. When you fall off the world, you can use that to sort of grab on and pull yourself back in again if you don't have a jetpack or you've run out of jetpack fuel. But I found there was enough sort of air control anyway that I, 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 I never felt the need for it, so I never bothered making one. 
Got the Informatron that tells you about everything in the in the pack as well. I need to read through some of the Crasturio specific stuff in here, but I won't bore you with that at the moment. So that's that's handy. We've got the jetpack, which I haven't got yet. I do want a jetpack, but we haven't got them yet because that's going to be that's going to come much later in the game, much later in the tech tree. But that allows you to fly around and move much more quickly than this normal sort of peasant speed walking around on the ground, which is terrible. So I'm looking definitely looking forward to having that. We've got Crastorio 2 installed, of course. That's the, the big overhaul mod pack for the early game that I was talking about. We've got landfill everything installed. That um, that means you can you can make your blueprint automatically put down landfill without having to add it manually to the to the blueprint. So if you if you've got a blueprint and you need to put it down over a lake, you can just drop it in place and it will automatically put put down the uh, the landfill that you need in order to make that. So We've got Logistics Request Manager. That's this one uh, that gives us this this icon up here. So you open that, and if you've got a um, if you've got a blue chest open at the same time, you can then drop a blueprint onto here, and it will automatically set the um, the blue chest that you have open to request all of the bits and pieces that are needed to make that blueprint. And so that means if you're planning to go off somewhere to do a, to do a build, and you're going to go by train or by rocket or by whatever, you can use one of these to immediately pull in all of the bits and pieces you're going to need in order to construct that blueprint, without having to sort of faff around and request them all individually and try and make sure you remember everything. This one is really, really useful. The only problem with it is I have a habit of um, overloading the um, whatever chest I put it onto. So I need to start remembering to do this with the uh, with the warehouses because then there's going to be lots of lots of room in them, even for my biggest blueprints. We've got manual inventory sort of on as well, which um, I don't think we have a particularly good example of it anywhere, but it keeps basically it keeps the inventory of any chests and things um, or, so, sorted nicely. Although that doesn't seem to have happened here, so I'm not quite sure... I don't know if it's actually turned on and working because we we're, were having some questions about it in in the stream as well. So I don't don't know quite what's going on there, but in theory it will keep your inv the inventory of any storage systems organized and in order so you, so to make it a bit easier to find stuff. So that's very very useful. Got robot attrition turned on. That's another recommended one for space exploration. Essentially it makes uh, robots drop out of the sky every so often due to atmospheric interference on um, when you leave Norvis. So if you go to, if you're in space or if you're on a particularly dodgy planet, then so the, the idea is it makes logistics robots a bit less useful and a bit less powerful um, and I'm a great fan of that because I'm more of a fan of the sort of the belt ba Belgian train based factories than I am of uh, logistics bot based ones. Logis logistics bots just seem less interesting to me. Got the shield projector so we can put shields on our spaceships later. We've got space exploration of course, it wouldn't be much without that. We've got text plates and that is, I don't know where they are. Oh yeah, you can make, you can make, um, I can make some copper ones. Let's do that. And there we go. With this I could then type um, my sequence in like that and I don't know how to use this actually. I've not tried it yet, but oh, there we go. And it will then, and you can so you can put down text on your on in, in your game and to label things or just to look pretty or for advertising purposes like this. <laughs> so that's quite nice. We've got a timer running up here. Tells you how long we've been playing for. So it's been about nearly five hours. We had a, we had a rather long stream on uh, on on Monday. It went 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 on a bit, but we got a lot done. It was a really productive stream. Probably at least partly because there were several of us playing. <laughs> Uh, we've got the to-do list installed. Uh, there's a couple of things in here that need to be done. We need to automate the production of coke and steel. So, yep, those are things that we can... So with this, I can say, uh, yes, I want to have that one. Or I could edit it and say, actually, I want uh, Tristan to do it. So I can set that in here and update it. And you can put in various um, information about it in there. You can you can nest... You can have subtasks in there as well. I think you can use this to, to sort sort the tasks around as well. Make sure you get them into the, into the order you want them to be in. And just generally, it allows us to keep track of everything that we need to do. Um, and, and everything that is sort of waiting to be done. This is really going to come into its own later on once we start having a much, much bigger factory and we're going off to other planets and, and builds might take an entire evening to get done. Because at the moment, it's mostly been a sort of, well, we need such and such a thing, I'll just do it. But in the future, having the, um, having the task list will be very, very useful. We've got vehicle snap installed, and that's one where, so when we get cars and, or tanks, it means when you drive them around, you can set them to snap to the cardinal directions, whether it's 4, 8, 16. So instead of sort of having to wiggle your way along a road, which is really hard, especially when there's a bit of lag, you can get you, you can know that your vehicle will head in a dead straight line as you go, um, or dead horizontal line or vertical line, and will follow the roads that we've laid down. Not that we've laid any roads, because we're not that organised, but maybe we will later. We shall see. AI industry is installed. That's another prereq for. That is actually a prereq for space exploration, and that hands in all kinds of stuff like needing to make these um, single-cylinder engines. I believe. I'm pretty sure that's not Vanilla Factorio. And um, electric engine, electric motors, in order to go into all kinds of stuff later on. And this time, I've learned from my previous street, a previous run, where I built these up 
basically as and where they were required. So I'd have a belt of iron would come in and then I'd make the engines and put them straight into whatever needed them. That was really frustrating because I just ended up building this or possibly this system over and over and over again. It just got really frustrating. So this time I've learned from learned from my past mistakes and I've put these on the bus. So they're down they're down here somewhere in the in the um, parts parts bin area. Um, and yeah, so the, the the recipe has improved a bit actually. When when I first when I first started playing uh, space exploration, you had to use a, a single cylinder petrol engine to make an electric motor, which made no sense at all from a, a real world point of view. But it was I suppose it was meant to be this was the second gen second tier of these ones, and that made it even more frustrating when you needed these. And then the recipe changed, and that made it even even more frustrating because I had to go around and fix everywhere where I was making electric motors. So this time we're avoiding all of those problems by making them right at the beginning of the bus and just shoving them on the bus and letting them run down it. Now we may run into throughput issues, we shall see, but for now this system is going to is working very very nicely. Equipment gantry is I believe for automatically loading up vehicles and spider trons and things, so that, that's potentially going to be useful. Um, I haven't used that one myself, but we'll see that much later on once we have, start to have vehicles and things. Got module inserter, and that allows you to um, remotely, sort of in almost a blueprinty kind of way, you can pick a machine type like um, uh, and, and, and okay, a tier two assembling machine. You can say I want that to always have speed module threes in it. So tick, and then using the module insert, you can just drag across anywhere, and then any machines of that type under your uh, module insert that you drag over, a bit like the upgrade planner, will then automatically have those modules put in them by bots because you can't do it remotely otherwise, and you do a lot of stuff remotely in space exploration. So it's going to be really, really useful to have that. Uh, we've got recipe book installed as well, which is a sort of which is an alternative to FNEI. I'm not quite sure where the button is for it. Um, I haven't haven't looked, haven't found it, but then I haven't really looked either. So it's probably maybe it's in here. Um, but one one of the players prefers that to FNEI, so we've installed that as well for his sake. Uh, we've got blueprint sandboxes. So this is an alternative to creative mod. So I can press Shift B, and this gets me an array of blueprint areas where I can just sort of start to sketch things out like this and there's no limit on the amount of part bits and pieces I have so you can just sort of sketch stuff out like this and then um, make a horrible tangle of cables yes um, and make and, and then make make your basic design and then get test it a bit and then get and then make make turn it into a blueprint and go off and put it put it down somewhere in the real world where it requires actual real stuff um, what's this oh light daylight nice um, and there are various ones available so I've got my own lab which is my personal one that nobody else can see I've got my own my fort the force one which anyone on my um, on my team can see so this is going to be useful if we want to sort of co if we want to have a, co a, co a collaboration on a, a on any designs we're putting together and then there's a couple of um, planetary and orbital ones that are, that are a bit spoilery if you look in them so I'm going to care very carefully not do so and of course we've also got bottleneck installed or bottleneck light installed and that's puts these little lights in the corners of all the machines these lights are yellow. That means the output is full, which is why these machines are idling. All these machines are idling, as you can see. There's as many sticks that we can put out over there. If I pick some of those up, then the machines will start running again. Their lights will after a moment or two because they tend to be a little bit laggy. These then go green to say that the machines are actually working. If for some reason they ran out of input, perhaps because some cruel person was stealing all of the all of the uh, iron that was being fed up here, then you get a red light, and that tells you that the machine is starved of inputs. So using these, you can always tell why a machine is working, why it's not working, and just keep the thing ticking over nicely and, 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 and working as it should, or at least makes it a little bit easier to spot where the problems are in your system. There we go, that's what I was saying earlier about being able to dump stuff out of your inventory into the machines around you. So that is all of the mods. I can now stop talking about those for a little while. Wow, that was a, that was rather a lot. If you'd like to play with the same list of mods that we're using, then you can find a list of them in the description, or you can download the linked save game, which will give you our exact map string and starting area, so you can just join in and see how you get on with exactly the same starting settings. So let's get on to what people were actually doing. Well, I started off the stream by basically talking about the mods for quite a long time. Um, <laughs> so uh, while I was doing that, everyone else sort of came in and got a lot of the burner phase done so they, they built up some of the um so let's put in some burner mining drills down here and some and some some furnaces and just got, generally got started on trying to build up a, a supply of iron and get a few belts together and all that sort all that sort of stuff the stuff you don't really want to do at the beginning of a street uh, beginning of a game so actually being the um being the streamer on this is working really really nicely for me it means other people do all the hard work brilliant i'm gonna have to do this do this sort of multi multi um multiplayer thing more often so yeah while they were doing that i talked about mods a lot and got got all that done and then we started to basically set out the bus and you can see there's there's a nice long bus running along here where we've automated everything from the, the motors that we need the automation cores electric motors and and so on and so on all the stuff that you need for fledgling base all the belts all the the, the all the inserters we have at the moment we did quite a lot of cursing about the uh, position of all these cliffs in here that's why there's some 
horrendous ugly spaghetti in the middle of the bus here because we're just trying desperately to get across these cliffs. Um, <laughs> it's always the way in Factorio early game though. We, we, we would like to rush cliff explosives but if we have a look in here and try and find them uh, we see that there's still quite a lot of research we need to do. Actually, that's not quite as bad as I thought it was. We've we've done a bit. We've done quite a bit since I last looked in here. So things are things are going quite well in there. But yeah, we're 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 a long way off getting those yet. Uh, and so yeah, I came down here. I I, I, I think virtually all of the um, the automation that's been done along here has been done by by me because I seem to sort of I fell into the into the into the role of, of getting all this built up and I quite enjoy doing the auto, building these sort of things up. So that that worked quite nicely. Um, so we've got three types of science cards, as you can see, coming in here, all going in and being being science stuff over here. We're doing the fluid chemistry science at the moment for some reason. I also built quite a lot of arboretums, and these are these are sorry, well they they they're called greenhouses, but we're using them to grow trees, and that's to get a supply of wood on the bus because quite a lot of the stuff in this mod pack actually requires wood. So you need it to make arboretums for sure, but I think you also need it for one of the tech cards uh, yes here we need it for the basic tech cards and I'm currently using it for the green circuits which we're making in a, at a decent rate over there but it's, it was pointed out by uh, by chat during the stream that actually this, this recipe isn't a great one because if we look at the green circuit recipes again um, there are there are two, 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 two sensible ones of them. One takes one takes in a stone tablet and produces an electronic circuit. The other one takes in three wood and produces an electronic circuit. And that means that you're quite strongly limited by how much wood you can cram down a belt for this. Because for every three wood that come along, you can only make one electronic circuit. Whereas with this one, you, you're making from stone tablets and you get four stone tablets out of a stone brick. So for every stone brick that comes in, you can make four electronic circuits. And that's much more efficient with the usage of belts, essentially. You don't need to have as many belts of raw material being brought in. So I think once we try to go to a larger scale on the um, on the green circuits, we're probably going to switch recipes. But for now, it made sense to use the wood, I reckon, because it's basically a free resource. So, over here, and I'm so looking forward to getting a navigation satellite so I don't have to actually run all the way over to everything I want to point out and talk about. Down here, we have all our wood production. And basically, you, you, can, make, you can make wood by... Basically, it, it, it takes lots and lots of lots and lots of water, and it grows trees. Great. I mean, that's that's kind of that feels feels reasonable. That's basically how you make a tree. There are some other recipes. There's quite a lot of recipes. You can have one that uses less water but does, does use some sand and is takes 60 seconds. Or there's this one which takes four times as much water but no sand and 120 seconds. So it's it is completely. This one is completely free. Um, or at least only uses free resources, but it uses a lot of time, and the greenhouses use quite a lot of power. So it's not quite as free as it sounds like, but it's it's pretty good. And greenhouses pull in a certain amount of pollution anyway, so they're, they're, they they they're, they're generally generally quite nice while they're running. Um, there's another one here which takes in sand and fertilizer and more water, but it produces a lot more wood, and it does it in the quicker time. So that's pretty good, but we haven't we haven't developed that technology yet. And there's probably going to be some more as well that I, that I need to look at. So what we've done here is we've got a whole row along here that's producing wood at quite a rate and then that's being prioritised to be sent out down the down onto the bus over this way or as a second choice it's coming up, coming up here and being fed round into the power generation systems up here. And this is quite deliberate. The reason we're doing this is because, well, it seems, as far as we can tell from the numbers, that the amount of pollution sucked up by one of these things making a piece of wood is less than the amount of pollution emitted by these um, by these uh, boilers when they burn the wood. So in theory, we have a net negative pollution system running here, which makes absolutely no sense because we're pulling the carbon dioxide out of the air to make the trees, sure, um, but then we're releasing it straight back out again. But, you know, it's a game. What can you do? But in order to make sure that we don't have a, a power crisis at any point, we also have a coal mine up here that is feeding this um, fuel processing facility and producing the processed fuel because that gains you 10, I think it's something like 10% on your uh, power uh, or energy in the fuel. So, you, so running it through here means that the coal goes 10% further. So it's, it's very worth doing. And we can then feed that down here into the system as well as a backup. So as you can see here, we've got we've got the wood coming through in the in the majority. But whenever there's a, whenever there's a shortage of it, we can put, we can pump through a bit of the uh, processed fuel instead. This is something we've done quite a lot in this game so far. I say we people have done quite a lot in this game so far because the, we've got loaders now because we're playing Crestorio 2 rather than just straight up space exploration. It, you can have a, a belt go straight into a chest and then straight out again on the other side, and it will without any loss of throughput 
so you can get you can get a full belt going in and out of these chests, which is great. And it means you can use these as just as a buffer on the belt to have a massive quantity of storage available. So if we have a sudden surge in the amount of solid fuel or the amount of fuel we need down here, this is always ready as a buffer to just to, to help us tie, tide us over while that's happening. Also down in the arboretum area, we've got an extra set of machine, an extra set of greenhouses that are growing, again growing wood in exactly the same way and that's being then being fed out into these greenhouses which um, are producing various different types of trees. And this is interesting because you can you go in here you can say okay let's have some dusty rose barrel trees apparently and let's let, let, let's plant some trees over over here just to, oops, to look pretty. Those went in a bit closer together than I was really intending them to to be honest so let's try that again and try and make something a little more sensible looking. And what's quite nice is there are variations of each of these trees as well. So it's not just a massive forest of absolutely identical trees. You get that little bit of variation in there. But all these trees now will start to suck up pollution as trees do. And eventually over time they will actually die from the pollution as again as trees do. But it allows you to sort of to reforest areas of the map in order to get a sort of an improvement into the in how well your um uh, your you're, you're dealing with the pollution. And so if I have a look on the map, let's let's see how, how is the pollution doing. Well, we've got a nice clean area here around the uh, greenhouses because the trees are sucking it all up. But I think we might need to put more greenhouses in above here or possibly even over here because the pollution is still spreading. We did go on a massive expedition um, towards the end of the last stream where we came all the way down here and eliminated all of the uh, the biter nests down here in this area to get because the pollution was creeping over this way. Mike died once while over here, so we're, we're keeping him. We've given him a little gravestone. Um, so we, yeah, we've, we've 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 gone out on a big expedition down here, but we're starting to get a few attacks again. So we think this biter nest up here might have expanded, and there might be a couple more somewhere in the somewhere in the darkness up here. So we really need to generate, ra uh, develop radar, and possibly start putting in walls like all the way across here, just to, just as an early warning system, if nothing else. But at the moment, we've generally been doing quite well with um, keeping our pollution under control and going out and being preemptive about taking out the biter nests. So we're still we're still only seeing small biters, and I think we've only had one um, attack triggered by pollution. Which is so we're doing quite well. I think the the uh, biter evolution hasn't gone very far yet. That's which is uh, which is rather nice. Tristan has largely been in charge of doing the extra tree things down here um, and there seems to have been some sort of communication difficulties between him and Mark. So Tristan has been going out planting trees and then Mark has been going out and harvesting them because he thinks they're in the, in, in the, wrong, in, in, in the way and in places where they shouldn't be. So I think they've sorted that confusion out now which is probably why there's a rather fabulous forest going on over here. Um, I think that's, be, that's probably Tristan sort of gone in and convinced Mark not to chop down his beautiful new forests and now this is probably going to grow and grow and grow as these, as these trees, as we produce more and more trees over here. Uh, Tristan and Mike have done quite a lot of exploring. I think they they decided they'd go they'd find their way to the other side of the lake and meet meet here. Tristan went this way. Mike went this way and felt he'd rather got the um, the short end of the um, or the long end of the deal, I suppose, given how far it is. But they did a quite good job. The only the biggest concern about this exploration is we've not found any more iron patches. So there was the um, there was the starter iron patch in here that we've now used nearly all of, and then there's another one here about six hundred thousand. But that's it. We've not seen any other iron anywhere in the in the area we've explored. So I think high priority in the next stream, despite us wanting to sort of push for you know all of the exciting new technologies, might be for us to all go out and start exploring a bit and trying to see if see if we can find any old iron out there just because otherwise we're going to have some serious problems when this patch runs out. Now we haven't been putting as much into ammunition as you often do because of the sort of the um, the preemptive biter elimination but still it's it's a worry. As I was saying Mark has been very busy with a lot of the the mining and the automation so I think these I believe all of these smelting arrays over here are Mark's doing Um, so these these are running with you know your uh, expected German efficiency, it's all going very very well. We're uh, we're producing more copper than we know what to do with. We do have when the when the factory is actually running properly, and I'm running around to, and, and everyone's grabbing huge amounts of belts because we're actually building rather than just talking about it. We do have a bit of an iron shortage, but at the moment, well at the moment it's all full up. And here's another one of those little buffer things I was talking about earlier, which are quite nice. Um, but yeah, so we 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 may need to upgrade the uh, the iron production. In fact, we'll then need to upgrade it even more because one of the th one of the other things high on the list of things we need to do is to automate steel um, because this won't cut it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, and this requires, yeah, steel requires a couple of things. You, in order to make steel, you need to shove in a lot, a lo loads and loads of iron plate. So actually, that's 
five to one. That sounds about the same as vanilla, I think, actually. But you also need coke in there as well, which is, you know, realistic. Can't really complain. Um, in order to make coke, you need to um, you need to burn wood and coal together in the furnace to make well charcoal coke, basically, and that gets fed over into into the into the steel processing. So there's, it's very slightly automated, but all this needs hand feeding, and it's it, 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 it's all a bit terrible, really. <laughs> oh, and we're going to need to start worrying about meteor strikes at some point in the future as well. But so far, we'd, I think we're just going to try and say, don't don't hit me. My my base is so small. You're probably going, there's plenty of other other parts of the planet to hit. Go for those instead, please, please, pretty please. <laughs> We've done a bit of stuff for generating power as well. We thought we'd try for um, a little bit of um, you know ecologically friendly power. So we put down this wind farm over here. The problem is the wind farm doesn't really generate very much power. It's like a worse version of solar um, as far as power generation goes. Although it does work all the time, so I suppose it's got it's got that going for it. But it doesn't produce very much power at all. It's it's a bit pathetic. Um, you see twenty. Yeah, 20 kilowatt maximum output, whereas each one of these steam engines produces uh, 750 kilowatts. So, yeah, they're a lot better. If we have a look at the power generation, power consumption, you can see we've got uh, we've got 100 steam engines in there producing al almost 10 megawatts, and we've got 32 wind turbines producing less than one, two thirds of a megawatt. And well, we've still got the um, the reactor from the ship that's producing a few kilowatts as well. So, yeah, we've got these these two are free, and this requires fuel. But this is the only one that's producing power at a decent rate. What is quite alarming is that 90% of the power we're generating is going into those uh, greenhouses in order to... This is a bit circular, really. So 90% of the power is going into the greenhouses in order to grow the trees that we're burning to generate the power. Um, I mean, that is kind of how physics works. Although the fact that we're getting more power out than we're putting in is a little bit of a worry. But, you know... They're... It's a game. Also, maybe they've got glass roofs. I, I, I suspect some of the sun gets in anyway, and so they, the trees would grow eventually, even without power. And that's that I'm choosing to believe is where the extra energy is coming from in this, because <laughs> otherwise yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I should probably also mention that while we're all down here dealing with the biters, the um, the it's it stinks and they don't like it achievement popped up, and that's the one that you get when you when you first trigger an attack caused by pollution, and because we're all complete and utter muppets, we just ignored that and went and carried on killing the biters down here. Then a minute or two later, we started getting alerts popping up telling us that um, that, that our base was under attack and things were being destroyed um, somewhere up in, up here in the um, in the mine area. And I think we decided it was probably that a little nest, an extra nest, had expanded out here that we hadn't seen. So we went, so we found that and dealt with it on the way back. But there was a sort of panicked run of everyone trying to get back around the lake to deal with the. Um, deal with the, uh, the the biter attack over here. Now this is where Mike was very very brave and he ran headlong into another biter nest down here and got himself killed in order to teleport himself back to the spawn point which is the um, this, this shelter uh, box here. And this is where you, you, you put one of these down where on any planet you go to and you can then respawn in it uh, when, if, should, you, should, the, uh, should the unthinkable happen. Um, the only problem was he realised he'd spawned in here without a weapon so he sort of lurked around, looked confused for a little while until Tristan came around and saved the day by shooting the biters. <laughs> So that was the um, that was the chaos for that session. So that's that was our first stream, and I think I think we did very very well on this. We've 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 made a huge amount of progress, probably because we had four reasonably experienced Factorio players. Well, three three reasonably experienced Factorio players and Mike, all all working together on the. Um, on, on the uh, on the challenges and so I was able to sort of concentrate on all of this stuff along here or building all of this up without having to worry that the, about the iron running out every so often or needing to upgrade the furnaces because we're using too much power too too much iron rather or too much uh, too much iron because Mark was dealing with that or to, didn't have to worry that we we're running out of power because Mike was dealing with that so it enabled me to just get my head down and really get on with building up all the automation stuff along here so this team attacking Factorio as a team works really really well and I knew that to an extent already because we did, we have had the um, the industrial revolution playthrough but it was nice to sort of it's nice to see it on um, again in, in, especially in the early stages when when there's just when things are a bit more frustrating because you don't have good solid infrastructure built up yet that said we're not doing too badly as it is so, as I, so in the next stream, what are we going to be doing? Well, there's a couple of tasks up here. We need to automate the coke and the steel generation so we can have um, the steel available for making better ammunition, better weapons, more stuff. There's going to be lots more uh, research to do. Um, as I think we're trying to, we may need to rush cars in order to go off and look for iron, but we might also want to try and rush others or push forward towards other stuff like cliff explosives in order to deal with some of these problems. Um, 
I'm sure there's going to be other stuff in here we want. We're going to want turrets. Oh, no, we've researched turrets. We do have turrets. Um, flare stacks. No, we don't want those. But um, pollution cleany, what do they call it? Air purification towers would be, would be quite nice to have at some point. Um, there's lots of stuff in here for us to for us to play with. I think we're going to want... You know, oh, steel fluid handling. Maybe that's the... Oh, is that the... Yes, that's... No, it's not. Um, but it high, higher, higher throughput pipes, apparently. Um, so that would be nice. Better inserters, maybe. There's lots and lots of things we want to work towards as well. And a lot of this is going to be very, very alien to us. Because it's going to be all Crastorio 2 based stuff. Um, and that's what that's the that's the going, going to be the exciting part of it. That, that's what we're looking forward to. So, make sure you come back along on uh, on Monday to join the stream. I'm uh, streaming both Twitch and YouTube. I don't really... At the moment, I don't know which I prefer people to watch on. So, join on whichever, is, whichever one works better for you. <laughs> I'm also going to be streaming stuff on Wednesday. Uh, that's going to vary very single player things so at the moment I'm looking at uh, the last starship as and when they do updates for that so they'll I'll have streamed that I streamed that last week um, and then I'm also going to start a Dyson sphere program playthrough at some point as well so we'll uh, do come do, do come along for that these videos come out at the weekend as you're well aware because you're watching one right now and when we when we have time there are other videos as well during the week uh, maybe for GTA videos on Thursdays maybe tutorials on Fridays we shall see what happens so make sure you're subscribed and make sure you're uh, got a, you're uh, watching for any any new videos that come out. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.